Hello, in today's STM32 programming, we are going to be covering the analog to digital converter with DMA. To enable the DMA in the cube configurator, we go to nested vector interrupt controller and we have to have the global interrupts enabled. And then under the DMA settings, you just want to click add and then select ADC1 since we're using ADC1. And we want to set the mode to circular. And then if you look at the data width it is a half word for peripheral to memory now half word is a 16-bit integer so we are going to use an unsigned 16-bit value to store our dma values from the analog to digital converter for the parameter settings nothing has changed from the previous video where we did the basic adc so scan conversion needs to be enabled continuous conversion mode needs to be enabled we have to set it in this case as number of conversions to three and the external trigger conversion is going to be a regular conversion launched by software and then we have our ranks so the rank determines where the adc will be placed in its buffer since you can only use a one-dimensional array in this case it will be every three so if you have a buffer that's only three bits wide you your channel will determine the order so channel zero will get sampled first then channel one then channel two and you can change the order now we can generate the code with the gear wheel or you can save switch to the c perspective and we can switch back to mx perspective which is up here that mx icon we just have a look at c main and there's nothing particularly interesting here switch back we delete the c main since we're not going to be using it then we need to go to our config again because we regenerated the project we need to enable the uart register callback somewhere there's going to be the adc one so this is the adc one so this enables us to use custom callbacks in our adc interrupt if you look at adc.h the handler is defined here if we look at how the handler is defined you can see here that here are the callbacks and that is required by the use all adc register callbacks is equal equals to one that we just configured. We switch to C++ perspective. So we go back to our ADC classes that we have implemented already. So the next class is going to be ADC DMA. And that's going to be class just create the shell class for publics and privates we actually copy over the constructor and just rename it we copy our destructor and rename that as well and now we're going to have a callback to one of the previous videos where we created the interrupts so we take our isr object and we create a isr that is going to be static and is going to be type class ADC DMA all and we're just going to call it ISR list as from our previous tutorials now we build our constructor switch to the C++ perspective so we can see better and then simply here we say our ISR list dot add and we are adding the current class that we are creating and then we create our destructor and it will be removed so then we need to also add our include one day i'll type it correctly isr all.h and then we also want a circular buffer so we say hash include so this is now to store our adc values from the dma buffer that we can read them out later so it automatically reads once you start a dma conversion it will automatically read the values for you and you can pull them out later and do an assessment based on that for them then we want to specify also in the constructor the samples that we want per channel so samples and that's going to be of type u in 16 underscore t so this can be a get to be a quite large value and then we create a private variable for this as well tag that underscore in front samples per channel is initialized with the input parameter of samples per channel and then we also need to initialize the adc base object so that takes in the instance 
components and a handle. Then we need to create a function that starts the DMA. So we can simply just look in where our channel is defined. Uh, so this is the ADC hole.h and then we just scroll down and then we find our start and stop functions for our ADC. And uh, now what we are looking for is the DMA start and the DMA stop. So we copy those two functions and then we paste them here for reference. So this takes a, this returns a hold def for us. And then we need to create a start function. And the start function takes in a reference and then p data and a length. In our case, we're going to make that void since we're going to self contain this. And then we have a stop, which also just returns a status. And that will be stop. And that will also take in void parameters since we already store the handle. So we copy the start function and we copy the stop function, tag it with the class name. We take our commented code and then we need to start filling in what is required for it. So in this case, it's very simple for the stop. We just return and that will be the handle, which is stored in the base class. And our start function will do a re return and that will require a ADC handle. And then we don't have these two variables as of yet. So we have a samples per channel here. So we need to create a buffer for us. So this P data variable. So this is going going to be a uint32. I am incorrect. This is going to be a uint16. Apparently I didn't copy there. A uh, uint16 and that is going to be of star of actually yeah star underscore samples and our samples have to get initialized as well. So our samples is initialized as null and then we say also if samples equals null return null underscore error so then we have the samples and then we need a length so that's going to be a uint32 so we create a uint32 here and then we say buffer so that's going to be our buffer length and that is going to be initially it's going to be zero so now we need to set up the sample and this buffer length. Actually, let's rename this to size. So we now have a method to start and stop the ADC. We also need to add here if underscore buffer size is zero and we return whole error. So now we need a method to add channels to our ADC because we are sampling three channels. So we add a un8 underscore t and we say channel count and we construct that initially as zero. So now we need to create a way for us to add channels. So this is going to return a whole. We're going to make this a private function, actually. So this is going to return a whole status. And we just say add underscore channel. And this is going to be void. So because it's an internal function, then we need to create this function. So our channel count, and that needs to be an underscore over there. Let's just quickly fix that. And then our channel count is automatically going to get incremented and then we're going to say the buffer size is equals to the samples per channel times the number of channels that are already in and we're going to multiply that by two so that we have a safety factor then we create a local un16 of samples so we remove the underscore and we set it equals to null initially then we are going to call a reloc so samples is going to be equals to we are going to cast it as a uint 16 and that's going to be re lock so this is the same as malloc it just allows you to resize a memory buffer and we're going to cast it as a void it is going to take in our underscore buffer size so the new buffer size and then we are going to test if the samples we say if samples is equivalent to null then we need to return all underscore error 
and then we need to reverse engineer this so channel count will be minus minus so we say also if channel count not equals zero and then we recompute our buffer size and then if all of this succeeds we say our samples pointer is equivalent to our local samples so we are saving the pointer and now we need a way to add these samples to a buffer so what we are going to do is we already have a vector here so i'm going to just going to copy this and that is going to be a vector of type circular buffer and our type name is going to be a u in 16 and that is going to be a pointer and we are going to say that is channel data and underscore that and then in our constructor we do channel data dot clear just so that we know it's a empty buffer and then in our destructor we say if underscore samples is not equals null we actually also have to call stop here as well and say if isr list remove if samples is not equal null we need to free and not delete because we're using that needs an a over there we're using relock over here so we need to use free in, in our destructor instead of delete so this is a interop between c and c plus plus if you use a c library allocation you need to use a c library d allocation and that reminds me i need to also since i'm using this i have to include the standard library stdlib.h so now we have channels and then for our channels we need to say if the channel data push back we say new circular buffer of type un16 and then we need to construct this a circular buffer and we create that and also here we need to say for u int 16 underscore i equals 0 comma i less than channel data dot size comma point i plus plus then we say delete i so here you can see the difference here we use free because we're using a c allocation here we're using a c plus plus allocation with new so we need to use delete here instead of free and we say say also here if channel i equals null we just continue so skip the delete operation so that clears out our memory when we destruct this class okay so we've added it and we have added a method to remove it so it's a return all underscore okay i do not actually intend to use this destructor at any point but it's nice to have it there so now we have our way to add channel so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say a function that says add channels it's going to take in a u int eight underscore t and we are going to say our we are going to call this add this variable as channels and say red and that's equals to hull underscore error so we initialize our return variable as error then i'm just going to copy by that's not going to compile if that t is not there then we say red equals add channel and say if red not equals hull underscore okay then we return red and we also when we exit we return red as well so now we have a method to add so we just add that to our class then we need to create the interrupts we need to add this uh, isr list so we say that's that and that is going to be of type uh, adcdma so the file is aware of it i actually should compile it and see what happens to the mx view oh i forgot the data type here ah i forgot the inheritance public adc base so that's our inheritance there build it what else is the problem cannot convert so this is going to be costed as a uint 32 
for T. Let me just see if I can find one. There we go. Star, because this takes in a UN32, but we are only reading 16-bit values. So it's going to treat it like 16-bit down in the code. This is intercompatibility again with C and C++. C++ is type safe while C is not. Cost from void to UN16. Loss precision. Let me just see here. That needs to be a star over there. Okay, and we are compiling. So now we go look at our handle. So there's two handles we care about. These two, which are conversion complete callback and then the conversion half complete callback. So if your DMA is running, then when you get to 50% of your buffer, it will generate an interrupt. And then when you get to your ending part of the buffer, it will also generate an interrupt. So you can get the last half of the buffer. This gives you the advantage if you're doing di digital signal processing, you can start performing your calculations before all the conversion data is in, saving you some processing time because I've had it in a case where I was actually sampling fast enough that I couldn't calculate the buffer before the next interrupt came. So in my case, I had to use the half complete. So I started my calculation on half of the buffer. And then when this complete calculation was done, I would do the rest of the calculation with the other half of the data. Control shift tab will switch me to the C file. And what I am looking for is underscore week. Uh, so that's the MSP in it. And here is our two interrupt functions. So I'm going to copy these two. This is the full complete interrupt handler. And this is the half complete interrupt handler. So we exit that. And then we go back to our CPP file. I'm going to put my interrupts at the top of the file. So we delete this. We delete this delete that delete that and we get rid of the weak declaration and then i am going to route these to the adc dma function so like follows and then we give them a private context and we declare them as static just to remove that front half and then we copy the half complete callback as well remove that part make it static so now we're back in the constructor I'm going to copy the error message from the uart precompile error message this one then we go to our constructor and then in our whole config we take the adc register callbacks that we set right at the beginning we just put that in there and put that in there and that's great stuff then on the handle so our adc protected variable we change this conversion complete callback is equivalent to our static function conversion complete we go to our whole config as well half complete okay let's just quickly compile that and see if it works okay great stuff it works let's just change the braces to keep continuity in the format let me go to now i've done this quite a few times already for the uart hole so this is nothing new so effectively we just scan the isr list and get our handle and then we call a function this function we still need to implement and then effectively we just copy this again and we say half complete okay so this is the complete callback so this needs to be half of the buffer that we copy and this copies the second half comment this out and just check that it compiles okay build finished with no errors okay now we need to implement this half copy and this full copy function so we create these two functions as private and i just want to create their stubs so that we don't get compilation errors save we build okay everything no complaints so for our copy half function i do not particularly feel like rewriting this entire loop so what this loop does is we start at index zero and then we divide our buffer size by two this is also one of the reasons why we multiply our buffer size by two so that it's always divisible by two then we take our then we add to this buffer size our channel data size and then in the inner loop we iterate over our channel data size so the number of channels we have and this will offset us out for every step of a channel so we have three it will sample one two three and then the second set and then the third set and then the fourth 
set. So this is how your samples are organized in your one dimensional buffer. So the first loop we have here indicates where we are starting over here. And then our secondary loop iterates through that specific section of the buffer. Then we put our data for our sample into a channel, into the particular channel's circular buffer. So we're just storing it here until we retrieve it. And then we need to do the full copy. So this is going to be the secondary half of the buffer so we simply move where we ended on the half copy to the front and then we are going to end it at the buffer size and as simple as that you can actually make this one function that just triggers based on an input parameter but i'm being lazy so now we have a method to pull our data out of the dma buffer so that we can read it later so we can store and read it later effectively so let's just quickly build and make sure it builds okay great stuff it builds then our final function is going to be a, another public function and this is going to be our read so our whole status def and we just say read and that's it and our parameters for our read is going to be the channel we want to read from and then a unsigned 16-bit integer and that is going to be a pointer of our value so now we're going to pull the value out depending on which channel we are using under add channels and we say if the channel data so our circular buffer here if it's index in channel and we point that to the count is equivalent to zero we return all underscore error then we do the same here and all we do is we say pull and then we assign value to the pull and we are reading only one byte from it well one element from it and we return all now we have a read and now we can start implementing because we can start it and we can read okay so we go to our main.c and we comment out this add channel and we comment out the constructor so our adc base gets replaced by adc dma and we'll say we will take a hundred samples per channel before we generate a interrupt so this is going to sample 50 generate an interrupt on half hour our DMA and then when we hit a hundred samples it will generate another interrupt and we say ADC one dot add take our add channels and we set up three channels for this Okay, our ADC buffer can go and our read here can go. Actually, the ADC buffer needs to stay because that's our print buffer, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is our print buffer. We say our read function. We want to read from channel zero. So the first channel and that's going to be equivalent to T zero. And that is going to be, you need to reference it to its address. Copy this over. It's going to be one, two. You need to declare these beforehand so we make them zero zero and zero shift tab them in okay so they're pre-declared then we just need to take that out and that's that and then just before we enter our while well one loop as to the when we set up the base dma we quickly build that great stuff we flash our stm32 except yeah let's see if this worked all right the and dead as a stone again see what i did incorrectly okay we switch to the debug perspective start our debugging so first thing we want to check is does our interrupt trigger we place a breakpoint on our interrupt then we let it run why are we stuck here hard fault that's interesting okay where do we we hard fault somewhere in the constructor we said chip go here step into step into into the I forget to initialize the DMA. No, I did not. Uh, let's just see here in the DMA initialization. MX DMA net four channel five. Okay. Uh, where are we currently on the stack? Okay. Step into. We can step over that. Okay. We do this, do this, we clear, we add, okay, step into, over, step over. Uh, what is red? Hull error. Why are we getting hull error on add channel? Reset, go, do something in add channel. Reset, run, okay, step into, step 
Eh, try that one again. I'll be back. So not even five seconds later, I've got the error. My for loop I need to initialize with channels. That's a whoopsie. And then go to our debug session again. Just to make sure. Which okay, now we're actually hitting the breakpoints. Let me just see our breakpoints. Hey, there's a conversion breakpoint. Let's just see what it does to that. Let's see. I change this value. It seems to be bound to every single voltage. Okay, that's a new bug. Let's have a look. See, let's just see in our initialization functions. I remember. Auto line light, discontinuous mode, scan mode enable, software start, ADC conversion, ADC samples, configure rank one. That looks to be correct. So it must be our data copying. That's incorrect. Let's see, a channel, read channel, we are channel our value, did I input the correct channels here? No, I did not, that is why we are not reading correctly. Okay, program again, see what our result is. Mm, those values look more reasonable. Okay, so let's see what happens when I change the, the voltages over here. Okay, so channel like one i actually don't remember which one i assigned to which voltage so that's channel one that does the exact same as the previous video where we did the base adc conversions then we have v2 and then v3 we can adjust as well just get them get everything into frame center one top one is v v3 so everything is in millivolts we adjust here so v1 and v1 is attached to the leds v2 and we have v1 v3 okay just double checking all right uh, so that's a basic introduction to using the DMA on an STM32. A like, share, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.